Hey everybody, today we're going to be making uh, the sprite particle effects on footsteps, but using only blueprints. Let's get to it. The first thing that you're going to want is a material. I've named mine MA Sprite Particle. Open that up, and I'll walk you through what I have here. The two things that might be new to you are these input data nodes, particle color and dynamic parameter. This allows for things to change with the Niagara system, so the emitter, uh, the particle system, can send information in and change the material with time. The particle color is what it is, it brings in a color, and the dynamic parameter, while we might not be using it for this tutorial, allows you to send in and rename parameters from the material. So. It's fun to have. Uh, I believe this allows you to change color over time or opacity or really anything that you bind to these parameters. One other thing you're going to want to do is with the actual material itself, make sure that it's set the blend mode over here. This blend mode needs to be set to translucent so that you get access to the opacity. Send the particle color to a multiply node, the RGB value up here. The texture val uh, you need a texture node and make this a parameter as well so right click and convert it to a parameter so that we can make a material instance and change our textures. Send the RGB up into that multiply, send it into another multiply so that you have your dynamic parameter which can control your base color and emissive where this is now connected. For the opacity, send the textures alpha to a multiply as well as the alpha from the particle color and then from that to a clamp with a min and a max set to 0 and 1 respectively. From the clamp, you want to go to an opacity input on a depth fade and then into the opacity. You should end up with something like this. The texture I'm using is a dummy sprite texture from the engine. Once you have that, you can right click and create a material instance. And the material instance, you can change the texture so you can have multiple of these. Here, I have, I'm using a texture which is just four cells of 16 bits each, 16 by 16 pixels, set to the 2D pixel texture import. And that way you can make multiple material instances of different types of textures and sprites, so for whatever effect that you're looking to accomplish. All right, now we're gonna make a new Niagara system. Go to Effects, Niagara System, create an empty system, hit Finish, call it whatever you want, open it up, and you should have a totally blank slate. Go to Add Emitter, search for Omnidirectional Burst. First things first, delete your Calculate Size and Rotational Inertia. Go to Sprite Renderer, look up the texture you want to use. Down below under Sub UV, set the sub image size to 4 in the X value or whatever size your texture is and how many frames you have. Under Particle Update, hit the plus, search for Sub UV Animation, and drag it to the top. Over on the end frame, set it to how many frames you have. I have four, so start frame zero and frame three for zero, one, two, three. Spawn Burst Instantaneous, I want four little dust particles. Initialize, Lifetime Mode, I like 5 to 0.8. Sprite size mode, random uniform. Let's go with 50 to 100. Now we're starting to see something. Dust should fly upwards a little bit, so let's reduce the gravity. Uh, 450, that looks good. Sphere location, we can shrink the sphere down to 10. There we go. So yeah, just keep playing around with the settings. Um, a lot of it is trial and error until you get the particle effect that you want. Next, we're gonna come over to our base character class or whatever character you have in the game. And after this animate function is where we're gonna put our logic because we wanna animate and then that's where we're queuing our footstep falls. We're unable to use a notify like with 3D models because there are no notifies with flipbooks or sprite textures. So what we actually have to do is use a timer that goes off to allow a particle effect to occur on the footstep fall. If we don't set a timer, it's gonna be triggering it on every single frame or tick 
and that's going to make way too many particle effects go off. So the first thing that we want to do is create a couple variables. First, we need a bool called B footstep gate. I like to put these in a config. You can see it there, sorry my head gets in the way a few times. B footstep gate and it's boolean type. We're also going to want a new timer called footstep timer. Make this of timer handle structure. One last thing that we need is an event dispatcher and we're gonna call this on footstep. You can see it right there. Create a new custom event called footstep. Drag on footstep out, we're going to bind an event to on footstep, the dispatch that we just made, the event dispatcher we just made. Drag the event down and connect it to footstep. Now we need to call on footstep over here, but we only want to call it if we're moving and we're not falling. Set a branch, connect the pins, and if true, call on footstep. Now on footstep, we only want to do this if our gate is true or open. And if it is true, we now want to flip our gate to false so that it closes. Then we want to spawn a system at location. The system we want to spawn is our dust. And we want to get actor location. And we want to subtract a vector. We want to go down on the z-axis by 75 and attach it to the location pin. Once we've done that, we want to set a timer by function name. And the function we need to now make. So go over to functions, create a new function, and we'll call it open footstep gate. And all open footstep gate does is set footstep gate back to true and returns. Back at set timer by function name, make sure you put this in with the right spelling, open footstep gate. Set the time, 0.3 is what I found to be a good time. And you can set the footstep timer here as well. This is not necessary, but I always like to have the variable so that at some point in the future, what you can do is you can detect if a timer is running off of this guy. And now the final thing you need to make sure is to set the default value for footstep gate to true. Otherwise, this won't work. Hit play, and now all of your characters have a particle effect go off while they run on their footsteps. All right, that's it, pretty easy. That's how you make particle effects with sprites in blueprints. Later.